Welcome to my guide to the CGP set a grammar and punctuation for test. Okay, number one, read the sentence below and circle the word or words that make it a question. You're not allergic to nuts, are you? The bit that makes it the question is this bit here, are you? As the first bit of the sentence is just a statement, you're not allergic to nuts. Number two, draw a line to match each prefix with the most likely root word. Looking at what we've got then, we have pre-something, it would be preview. We have under something, which would be under value. And finally, we have unusual. Number three, tick the sentence which uses an apostrophe correctly. Right, looking at the first one, then we have the cherry's stalks have been removed. The problem with this is cherry, in this case, has been spelt as a plural. So we're assuming we're talking about several cherry's stalks have been removed. The problem with that is if it's a plural, the apostrophe goes at the end of the word. So it would be cherry s then the apostrophe. So that one isn't correct. Secondly, I think this is the mice as whole. The problem with that is if you were going to have the word mice, it would be mice apostrophe s. I think this is the mice as whole. As mice doesn't normally end with an s, you would have apostrophe s. But because cherries ended with an s already, that was when we would have put the apostrophe at the end of the s. So finally, that must mean the last one is correct. Everyone's costumes over there. That has been used correctly. It's an apostrophe for possession. We're talking about everyone being the word, the show possession, and then the apostrophe after that, then the S. So everyone's costumes are over there is the right answer. Number four, read the sentences below. Tick the two sentences which are statements. A few things can give it away quite quickly which ones aren't statements, and those are the ones that end in question marks because they're obviously going to be questions, not statements. So we can rule those two out. Where is the nearest airport and would you like to go to the zoo? Uh, we can also rule out the third one because it says don't touch that with an exclamation mark which means that that is an exclamation not a statement so the only two that we've got left are the first one yasmin offered me a sweet that is just a statement a bit of information and the last one my favorite color is orange that's also a statement so it's those two there number five read the two sentences below explain how the comma changes the meaning when you get a question like this you've got to be quite specific to show that you understand what the comma has done in that sentence. So looking at the first one, it says, will you remember to pay, comma, Jane? So what you need to write is something along the lines of, in the first example, somebody is asking Jane if she will remember to pay. Then you'll need to follow up with the second point saying, the second sentence says, will you remember to pay Jane? So somebody is being asked if they will remember to pay Jane, as opposed to asking Jane if she will remember to pay. Number six, read the sentence below and choose conjunctions to complete the sentence. This is fairly straightforward, just put the words in at different points and see which one makes the sentence make sense. I lost the board game before I lost at cards, but it didn't matter because I won at chess. Number seven, read the sentences below and tick the sentence which should be written as two separate sentences. What we'll do then is we'll go through each one one by one. So the first one says, I love strawberries, comma, but I hate raspberries. That is a fine sentence by itself because they've used the coordinating conjunction in the middle, but it's joined those two main clauses together to make a long sentence, which is fine. I love strawberries, but I hate raspberries. Second example, it says, Charlie lives with Sam, Millie and George. They've just listed out the people that Charlie lives with. Again, that just needs to be one sentence. That's absolutely fine. The third one says, I heard you were ill, are you feeling better? Now those are two separate sections. First one says, I heard you were ill, so that's a statement. And the next bit says, are you feeling better? That's a question. And as a result, we'd probably be best putting a full stop after ill. I heard you were ill, full stop, start a new sentence, are you feeling better? So that would be the one that needs to be two separate sentences. And just to check, the last one says, we didn't go to school because of the snow. Because they've used because, which is a subordinating conjunction, they turn that into a long sentence, which is absolutely fine. So again, that can be one sentence. Number eight, read the sentence below. Circle the most suitable relative pronoun to complete the sentence. I'm so pleased for the team, something won the tournament. In this case, the answer would be that. I'm so pleased for the team that won the tournament. If you're not sure, what I'd recommend doing is going through each example, putting it in and then reading it and seeing which one makes the most sense. And in this case, even if you didn't know that that was the most relevant relative pronoun, it's still the one that makes the most sense. Number nine, read the sentence below. Replace the word in bold with a more formal word. Write the word in the box. Put an extra jumper on. It's a bit nippy outside. 
So you should know there are two types of language in essence. There's informal language and there's formal language. If something is informal, it's probably more likely how you're going to talk to your friends or if you're having a conversation with someone you knew. However, if you want to use formal language, that's the sort of language you use when you're going for a job interview or you're talking to someone who's very important, such as the Queen or the Prime Minister. In this case, we just need to find a better word than nippy, the one that's a bit more formal. Uh, and the most obvious one would be cold. So put an extra jumper on, it's a bit cold outside. Now we couldn't really have words like freezing because you can't be a bit freezing, it's either freezing or it isn't. So the obvious one there would be cold. Number 10, add a comma in the correct place in the sentence below. Last night Jacob's dad bought us all pizza. Now you should know that that first phrase there, last night, that is a fronted adverbial. And we always put commas after fronted adverbial. They normally set the scene, they give us a bit of a time, when, where or how the scene is taking place. So Jacob's dad bought us all the pizza. When did you do that? Last night. So that bit's the front of the adverbial. So we definitely need to have a comma after that. Number 11, there is one error in the sentence below. Write the correction in the box. Francis haven't fed the fish today. So the obvious correction there should be that haven't needs to be changed to hasn't. Francis hasn't fed the fish today. Finally, put a tick in the correct column to show whether each sentence is active or passive. I've mentioned previously on previous videos that if something's an active sentence, it means that the subject is doing something, actively doing something. And if it's passive, something is being done unto the subject, if that makes sense. So the first one is active, like they've shown. Everyone loved watching Sports Day. So everyone's doing something, they're watching Sports Day and they love it. The second one says, I was driven here by mum. So mum was doing something to our subject, which was I. Something's being done unto I. So the second one is passive. The third one, I can grow fruit and vegetables. That's active, that's something that you would be doing. And lastly, we were shown round by the tour guides. So the tour guide is doing something unto we in this case. So that one is also passive. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments box and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks.